starting out, you wanna make sure that you have a clean face and your hair is pulled back. The first product I'm gonna be using is toilet paper. I tore it into a long skinny piece and I'm gonna apply that onto my face with liquid latex. You have to kind of work fast because the liquid latex dries super quick. Once you've figured out exactly where you want your wound to be, you go ahead and apply the liquid latex and then you lay that toilet paper directly on top of it. I'm rolling my toilet paper up so I can create more of a puffy scar and it's also gonna add more texture and depth to the wound. Now that I've figured out my scar placement, I'm just going around the edges with more liquid latex just to make sure everything is secure and down in place. I did end up having to use a separate piece of toilet paper to connect the remainder of my scar towards the side of my face, but that is perfectly fine. You can actually use way more toilet paper than I did. Using more toilet paper would just give you more depth and more texture to your scar. Now I'm just going over the entire piece of toilet paper with the liquid latex. It is okay if you go off of the toilet paper a bit because that's going to make sure that everything is secure and in place on your face. It will also help fill the gap between the toilet paper and your face, creating a smooth transition between the two. While the liquid latex is drying, I'm going to set my eyes using my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and my Airspun Setting Powder. Using the setting powder over top of a cream product is just gonna assure you that your shadows are gonna blend flawlessly and have an even base. I'm just going in with a light brown shadow for my transition shade, and I will gradually, as I go down my eye, start to get darker with shades. Now that I'm happy with my eyeshadow, I'm going to take my Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter and I'm going to create a half cut crease. I'm just going to use a fluffy brush to blend that edge out between the glitter and the shadow. Now that I'm happy with my eyeshadow, I'm going to move on to my face makeup. Since it is like an everyday face routine, I'm not going to explain it step by step. Now that my normal face makeup is done, I'm going to be using the orange face paint and I'm going to be placing it all over the side of my face that has nothing on it. I didn't end up doing more than one coat just so it wasn't so patchy, but I also brought it down my neck in a messy like fashion.
Now that I officially look like a Cheeto, I'm gonna use my Airspun powder just to set all that makeup in place so I can go in later with powder products without an issue. With my pretty vulgar black gel liner, I'm just going in and finding my eye shape and filling it in. Now that I'm happy with how my eye is turning out, I'm going to move on to the nose and then to the mouth. Now that I've figured out my mouth placement, I'm going to take a dark brown shadow and start to create the lines going down my face. Now that all the lines are complete, I'm going to widen my mouth and then start to add in the teeth. Now that I'm done with the teeth, I'm just going to go in with a fluffy brush and try to blend out those dark brown lines that we had already placed to get ready for the rest of the face. And I'm also going to go through and I'm going to set everything that's black with a black shadow. Using the lightest cream color that I've got, I'm going to go in between all of my lines and it's going to create a highlighted effect and make the pumpkin look like it's actually rounded. Since we've highlighted, it wouldn't look correct if we weren't shading. So now I'm going to use a dark orange shade and I'm just going to go along the same lines that I had already created with the dark brown.
Going over top of the brown lines that we had already created, I'm going to use a liquid liner pen and I'm going to go in ever so lightly just to create more definition. Now that I've finished those lines, I'm just going to go in with a more shimmer shadow just to really make that pumpkin pop. Using a burnt orange shade, I'm just going to go all the way around that liquid latex just to give it more of a definition like there's a difference between the two. Using the dark brown shade that we had used before, I'm just going to go back over those lines that we've already created just to give it more depth and more definition. Using a black coal liner, I'm just going to go in and tight line just so we have no weird, awkward white spaces in our black eye. Now using our black gel liner on a concealer brush, I'm just going to edge my jaw. And I'm actually going to end up creating teeth that go down my neck the same way that my teeth are on my face. Going back in with our black gel liner, I'm just going to go in between the teeth that I've already created and just do a little wispy motions, if that makes sense, just to give it a little bit more depth. Now going in with some falsies, I actually have no idea what these falsies actually are. I got them at the Halloween store, but they actually ended up being perfect for this look. Last but certainly not least, we have to finish the scar. I actually just started applying some of the blood and I realized that I actually needed to cover the liquid latex with some red shadow just to make it a little bit more realistic. And this look is complete. I actually was super happy with it. But as always, thank you guys for watching and following along. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.